Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back once again to the weekly upload update. This, of course, is episode 3, volume 2. And I am, of course, OB, aka 3X. Now, I've already given a disclaimer before that these weekly upload updates might not always be weekly, such as the case here because obviously it's been a couple of weeks since I did my last video showcasing my creations. Things have happened. I was a bit under the weather, recovering and so on. But then a strange thing happened on the way to making this video. That being, I ended up completely finishing the entire XWA Diamond Division, as in the whole dang thing. Yeah, everyone that you see is 100% completed and ready for upload. It's just obviously that I don't have the means to be able to upload all of them at once because of the limitations with the servers and having to earn extra slots. At the present moment, I'm silver rank, so I do have 10 slots to work with. And uh, the eight cores that you're going to see in this video are all going to be available right now for download on PlayStation 4 Community Creations. But before we actually get into showcasing any of them, there are two things that I want to address. First and foremost, if you've already watched the uh, teaser trailer that I put out, then you'll know that I'm completely refilming the final three rounds of the Warfield Invitational in WWE 2K18. Because obviously I've completed all of the actual combatants who are still in the tournament. So it makes sense to make that my first actual 2K18 production. As opposed to using the 2K17 footage. So I can use all the new systems and you can see all the brand new designs that I've created and all the coolness that's going on. I also actually completely recreated the uh, Warfield Invitational Arena spot on from 2K17 into 2K18. I'll be showcasing that as well. So expect that to take place over the course of the next couple of weeks. I should hope to complete filming by the end of this weekend and hopefully have it done sometime mid next week that's just a ballpark figure don't hold me to that that's number one number two is the fact that as of today me filming this video on November 14th 2017 the two previously exclusive pre-order DLC packs that being the Kurt Angle pack from pre-ordering and the Seen Enough pack that was available either from the Seen Enough special edition or the digital editions are now available for purchase across all platforms so you are now able to obtain whatever DLC content it was that might have restricted you from obtaining my previously released calls. The Kurt Angle pack is about $3.99 American. The Seen Enough pack, I believe, is about $7.99 American. Convert that to whatever currency it is that is to your particular country. But with that said, you have absolutely no excuse to not be able to obtain any of my content from this point forward. It costed me 99 bucks to be able to access this content early. It's only going to cost you at max 11 $12. So money should not be an object here. And if that is still the restricting factor for you not to be able to obtain any of my creations going forward, I'm sorry, but that's just something that you're going to have to deal with. Like I said in my update update video, I will not be making non-DLC moveset versions of my creations. Especially now since that content is available for everyone. The next bit of 
DLC content, which I'm believing is going to be the NXT pack that'll feature Alistair Black and Elias Sampson and so on, is going to be available to everyone. So if you don't have the season pass, or if you don't buy this particular DLC, you're not going to be able to get my creations if I use that content. That's as simply stated as I can put it there for you. So we have that disclaimer out of the way. The cat's out of the bag. Everything is on the table there. So that being said, now let's get into the creations that I have for you this week so I decided in this video we're gonna kick things off with the elite eight if you will the eight participants remaining for the Warfield Invitational so going in alphabetical order we will start with the 2018 version of Abigail Rooker who obviously made her very first appearance very late in the game last year along with a handful of brand new characters that I made that I said I was going to be absorbing into the XWA Diamond Division. So you can consider them all to be absorbed. Uh, just like in last year's version, facially she is modeled after Jessica Biel. And uh, I try not to use celebrity faces very often when making creations as opposed to using models or just unknown faces that are unidentifiable. But as it is that I stated before, I very much wanted to make a character that was based loosely off of the character Abigail Whistler from the Blade film trilogy. She was a cool cal character. And uh, unfortunately, she was never absorbed into the actual Marvel Universe. I mean, she has made appearance in comics, but those were all based on the movies, which are not necessarily based inside of the Marvel comic or cinematic universes. I don't know if they're gonna do a Blade movie based in the MCU, but that would be cool, and it would be cool if they got Abigail Whistler as a character in it as well, as uh, Blade, which would have to be played by Wesley Snipes. But I'm going off on a tangent then. Let's get back into the uh, design here. She's got an obviously new look brand spanking new attire for 2018 the uh, artwork that you see here on the uh, brazier is something pulled off of the internet now I actually found a logo like this that was uploaded already in community creations while I was doing a search for some other content but mine's a custom job because obviously you have the uh, text here on the side that if you can't read it out says Rooker Rocket, which is in actuality the name of one of her finishers. That's the uh, name of the rocket kick that she uses as a finishing maneuver. So here you see it again on the uh, trunks. And it's the same logo, just kind of stretched out a bit. And it had a nice effect to it where it kind of wraps around, thanks in great part to the wrap function in the game. And then I threw an emboss on it to give it kind of a 3D effect. Something that looks like it was actually uh, printed on or just really custom looking work. Now, let's take a look at the uh, armbands here. You have the uh, arm sleeve and I threw my uh, custom belt buckles on them. Uh, these I actually made from scratch. Pulling some images from uh, Photoshop, I mean from Google and compiling them in Photoshop. Uh, as you know, if you followed me last year, I ended up using a lot of assets from other characters, creations like uh, buckles, belts, just those kind of little accessorizations. Accessorizations, that's not even a word. Accessories for my own creations just to add that little extra something or little touches to them so because you have a very hard time finding other people's work now because you have to find them by tags or usernames you can't go through friends lists anymore which is something I really hope that they fix in a future patch that forced me to have to basically make my own stuff so that's what I did and uh, this particular element here is one that you will see 
in quite a few other characters of mine in future updates, as well as any other assets that I make just for the purpose of accessorizing. And uh, yeah, it's it's a nice added touch. It makes the armband look very unique. One little thing kind of stands it out or sets it off. And uh, yeah, that's the kind of look that I wanted to have for her. Now as we look at the uh, kick pads here, pretty much the same idea, same asset, just wrapped around. Very nice effect there, along with the uh, leather effect, which is an element that's used throughout the entirety of this particular attire. It's very, very sleek and uh, rocker-ish, which is kind of part of the uh, persona that I wanted to uh, convey for her. As it is that I had stated uh, last year, I didn't want her to look too much like Haley Jonas, but she's kind of cut from that same cloth, if you will. A really kind of uh, tough as nails, one of the boys type of girls. So, let's take a look at the artwork here, as in the uh, tattoo work. I made a slight change, actually. Uh, on the right side is still the uh, pan tattoo or artwork that was made by uh, DZO Olivier and uh, I will show you a close-up of that actual artwork there very detailed stuff I've said this plenty of times already and I've used plenty of his stuff already in other creations that you will be seeing in future updates so this is that first example here you can already see the uh, the detail going on here I might actually uh, tweak it a little bit because I see there's some gray elements, but when you're looking from afar, it's not very noticeable. Now, as far as the uh, left arm, I changed that one because I wasn't actually satisfied with the tattoo that I had used before, particularly because it had a lot of uh, dark area along the top and the bottom. And when I tried to remove that area or delete it, it didn't come out right it didn't make the artwork look as good as it did on its own so that particular tattoo had to go onto the cutting room floor and uh, instead we have this uh, crest here that's got a uh, sword you got some uh, falcons or eagles whatever they are and the uh, skull in the center really really basic stuff but very uh, subtle and also kind of fits into her uh, persona so to speak, uh, her background information, which gets a little more detailed as it is that I will show you in the uh, alternate attire, but this primary look I wanted to uh, make kind of, like I said, rocker-ish or really kind of like uh, punkish, but still have its uh, functionality of being a uh, traditional wrestling attire, if you will. So, now let's look at the alternates. So her secondary attire is kind of an offshoot of the secondary attire that I had made for her last year. Some of the elements are similar, even though they obviously look different from each other. The main element obviously is skulls with fire on them. Now, these are actually uh, images that I pulled from Google and did a little extra post-production in Photoshop that being adding the uh, grayish tribal designs on them that was to make it look kinda close to how it is that her attire looked like in uh, 2K17 but still have a wee bit of differentiation to it you will also notice on the top of the design the word Huntress which is her thing kind of like a quasi nickname like a nickname but not a nickname that she would actually use she won't be the huntress abigail rooker or abigail the huntress rooker but it's just kind of a side nickname you know how like the rocks got the great one or stone cold is the rattlesnake or triple h is the cerebral assassin so abigail's the huntress and that plays into her uh, background as i said before of her being a former bounty hunter so she always gets her lady or man if you will and that's basically the uh, gist of this particular 
logo and the meaning towards it. Now for the tights, basically same idea. Uh, this is derivative of her look from last year, which was like two flaming skulls facing each other. I couldn't find those exact skulls, and that exact artwork was not uploaded to uh, Community Creations, so I had to improvise and come up with my own. And this here is the results. You're going to see the matching set on the front and the back. I decided not to put the uh, text over it because I wanted the uh, skulls themselves to be the basic uh, focal point on the trunks at least and give it that kind of really uh, unique look. Definitely a lot of uh, flaming things going on here and it all stands out pretty well. Now as for the uh, kick pads, the boots. It's the Huntress Skull logo just on the back side there. I put it on the front, but I didn't like how it looked. Sometimes uh, having too much stuff displaying in the front side kind of takes away from what it is that you want the uh, eye to notice, which in this case would be the uh, logos, that being the uh, Brazier first and foremost, and then the trunks. If I put those same logos on the front of the kick pad, then that would be taking away from the top half because that's a pretty big area that you're working with there on the kick pads. Whereas, specifically for uh, female characters, you're not working with a lot of real estate if you're just using trunks and brassiers. So, you gotta use that space as wisely as possible. And that's something that I've had to notice after making a couple of different uh, edits to logos and such as far as how it is that I want them to look on the entire parts themselves. So in the case of uh, females, it's a lot more horizontal unless you're using the, uh, the, the texturing tricks and such like that using the, uh, the doink uh, outfits like so many people use uh, I still well I decided I didn't want to go with that like I can work with what it is that I have and still have really really good effects here as you will no doubt agree as it is that you take a look at all the rest of the uh, creations that I will be uh, showing off to you guys so now let's have a look at her entrance attire for the alternate and it's basically a uh, hooded vest with the uh, flaming skulls wrapped around the front and that carries over into the back for a very nice effect if I do say so myself. Uh, like I said before, the wrap effect is a very very powerful tool and it's a very welcome addition to the create mode here and uh, it shows. Now, I actually decided I wanted to go with the uh, entrance attire on the alternate and not the primary attire because I really liked the way that that Rooker Rocket logo looked like and it doesn't wrap around the same way considering the fact that it's not a symmetrical design. So, uh, there you have it. Pretty much. But this speaks for itself here. It, it's kind of got like a Bam Bam Bigelow type of feel to it. Now that I'm looking at it and uh, actually spinning it around and taking a closer look at it. And uh, yeah, it's, that's a nice effect. Maybe at some point I might actually make a long tight version of tire for her using these skulls. That's down the road obviously. Uh, but for the most part, Miss Rooker here's definitely got a very, very uh, fierce look and feel to her which is exactly the type of persona that I wanted to convey with the character. She's pretty much the uh, the roughest around the edges amongst all of the uh, newest diamonds that I have created and I think I've succeeded at least in conveying that image as far as her attire goes. So yeah that's Abigail Rooker for you folks 2k18 version. Next up on the list is the 2018 version of America Weston. 
And yeah, this is probably the most dramatic change of any character that I have made or converted from uh, 2K17 to 2K18. Because mainly, as it is that I said when I first introduced her in the uh, weekly upload update, that she was still very much a work in progress and was incomplete for the most part, even though I was using her in the Warfield Invitational Tournament. That is not the case anymore. And in doing so, there are certain elements that I completely got rid of. Um, obviously, the uh, logo work that I created for her in last year's game isn't anywhere to be seen on her current attires. I will be probably bringing those back in like a throwback attire or something like that at some point in time in the distant future. But as far as 2K18 for starters, she's got a really clean, athletic look to her that screams, obviously, Murica, as in the red, white, and blue. You see the uh, name logo there, full name. The uh, fonts I found, as always, on defont.com, and then just did a little color manipulation. The uh, star logo is something that I found on a Google search and just did some uh, workarounds on, in Photoshop to uh, complete the look, as is the uh, single star on the tights there, which you see again on the back side, along with a primitive star with the uh, red outline to it. Very, very nice effect. Really, really clean and sporty, which was the type of look that I wanted to have for her, at least for the time being. I actually do have plans on making some additional attires for her, more specifically one that's close to that of uh, Lacey Evans from NXT. I've decided to actually give a uh, military background to Miss Weston as well, which kind of justifies the whole uh, overabundance of patriotism that she has in her look and her gimmick as well. Now, as far as the face goes, like I had said in last year's uh, version, the original concept for the character was based around April Hunter. The problem is I could not for the life of me find a high definition or higher quality enough face texture to use of April Hunter for the character. Then I found out that my brother actually had one and he used it for another character of his own. So that forced me to have to go with finding some other redhead for using her face because I wanted it to actually be a natural redhead not just somebody who I would be converting and not have that natural ginger look. So I looked towards models at first and again this wound up being one of those situations where I had to go the celebrity route. In this case that of Christina Hendricks being the uh, face model base for Miss Weston. Of course Christina Hendricks is known mostly for her role in the TV series Mad Men and is known even more for being, how we say, very naturally endowed, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so I went with that face and just made basically a uh, symmetrical morph of her face in Photoshop to give it kind of her look, but kind of not her look. So it still looks sort of original, just a little manipulated version of the genuine article, so to speak. And as you can see, the end result is very, very natural looking, which was what it was that I wanted to uh, create. That was the effect I wanted to have for Miss Weston. And as a result, if you recall her model from last year as well 
she's a lot less tanned. Like, a lot less tanned. Like, seriously. <laughs> the 2K17 version of America is just basically a prototype at this point. This is the final product here. And as you can see from her uh, physique, the final product is not very small. Again, that's one thing that I wanted to carry over from her being based loosely off of April Hunter. April Hunter, of course, being a larger sized female that had been having a background in bodybuilding before she ever started in wrestling. So that was something that I definitely wanted to uh, convey. So as a result, Miss Weston here is in the uh, power female category alongside of the likes of uh, Jamie Fury and Sarah Warfield. And she's not the only one that I'm going to show you here, obviously. Not who you're thinking, but we'll see. You'll see for yourself. Yeah. Anyway, let's take a look now at the uh, entrance here. And once again, continuing with the uh, sporty look, we've got the uh, sleeveless hoodie sweatshirt here. That is her uh, entrance. And pretty much the same elements, the uh, star combination in the front and her name logo in the back there. And might I say that in game, when she's coming out and she's carrying the American flag, because I gave her the entrance that's carrying the American flag, it just works. It just looks absolutely amazing. And uh, that's part of the reason why I decided I wanted to add that whole uh, military background into her backstory. Just from the effect of the entrance in combination with this stuff here. Like I always say, inspiration comes from everywhere. So basically from me fleshing out the finalized version of the character, appearance wise, that helped me to actually develop a backstory for the character in that same process, which is very cool. So what we have here for the alternate is basically a color swap variation. That being the primary colors, the red, white, and blue are flipped, as in the red and the blue parts are flipped. And we have an alternate logo, which is basically the same style but a little different it's got a single red stripe no name but it does have her nickname that being the suplex queen and then of course made in america just to be completely cheesy with it aside from that most everything else is pretty much the same as far as placement goes on the actual attire itself once again simple effects just basic swaps to create a little variation in things and uh, the effect is effective yeah <laughs> I have such a way with words don't I let's take a look at the entrance attire then for alternate attire here and once again basically just a little bit of a variation going on here same hooded sweatshirt. I put the name logo in the front this time, however, and the star logo in the back. So it's just like a complete flip, basically. And we got the uh, the blue piping or uh, trim, whatever it is that you want to call it. it. She's got like this really kind of Team USA vibe going on here with both of the attires, which was what it was that I wanted to go with at least in this first version of her look like I said that's going to change I'm probably going to have the uh, Lacey Evans attire and then a throwback attire using the uh, the logos that I created in 2k17 in the next update that I make to her when that happens, I will obviously show that off to you guys in a future upload update video. But for the most part, Miss Weston here is complete, finally. And I do have to say, I'm 
definitely impressed with the results after some, uh, I say some, after many, many different changes to what it is that I had planned for her. The, uh, the end product is definitely to my liking and hopefully it will be to your liking as well whenever it is that you've managed to get your hands on her. Next up on the list, we have the 2018 version of The Lioness, aka the Queen of Sport, or just simply Aurora Cellini, if you're friendly with her, of which I don't know too many other ladies out there who would be friendly with her, considering the fact that she's kind of got a chip on her shoulder, obviously, being that lone female constituent of the Lion's Pride camp, as you see there on the uh, top strap of her uh, brassiere, also featured on the uh, tights there, obviously, with the uh, embossing function, really gives it a very, very cool looking metallic sheen to it, with the style that I used. As it is that I also used on the uh, brand spanking new logo that I made for her. Uh, when I made her last year, obviously, I pieced together some designs that I grabbed from Community Creations. And I wasn't going to do that again because I prefer to have my own logo work. So this is the end result here. What you see in actuality is an actual uh, design of a lioness. And she's got a crown on. You guess, probably can't see it because of the uh, detail of the uh, embossing itself. But I'll put the actual logo on screen for you to see it. And it just basically, it personifies what Aurora Cellini's character is, obviously. She is the lone lioness amongst the Lion's Pride camp, which comprise, is comprised of three guys and one girl. So obviously she's going to have uh, a bit of a superiority complex because of that. You know, training with men and thinking that that alone plus the uh, tutelage of Magnus von Schwartz gives her a uh, physical and psychological edge over her opponents. And that's going to be kind of something that I will be building on with her character wise. But as far as the actual gear itself goes uh, you can also see there's a little bit of a differentiation from her look in last year's game and you see a different variation of the logo with the uh, name of her finisher is instead of her name on the bottom side the lioness driver and again you know I wanted to continue with that sporty look which is a signature of Lion's Pride. And even though I probably use that type of element a lot in my uh, creations, I still manage to make it look different with each character, which is a testament to basically knowing what type of characters you want to make and building off of that. So. To continue with the uh, team element, if you will, you see on the uh, armband she's got her uh, country of origin. That's going to be an element that I will use with the remaining members of Lions Pride, that being Jesse Risen and Rob Cosmos from the US, and obviously Magnus from Germany. So they'll all have their respective nation's flags on their armband and also somewhere on their actual ring gear itself. In Aurora's case, it's the Brazier. In the other three's case, it'll probably be on their tights somewhere. Don't know where, but you'll see it. But anyway, let's scroll down to the boots. Basically, using the uh, Lioness logo once again there. And uh, it's a pretty cut and dry design. I mean, it's just basically an updated variation of her look from 2K17 and uh, that's one of those situations where you really didn't need to do anything very different 
The only main thing was that I wanted to actually create her some actual logo work to uh, make her stand out or be more unique as opposed to using other people's material which may not return in the next version of the game as it is the case here which is another main reason why I typically make my own stuff because sometimes the stuff that you use will look cool but you're looking for it next game and it's just not uploaded and if you can't find it on a Google search then you're screwed so luckily I'm pretty good at Photoshop so I can kinda get around that as you can see here now let's take a look at the entrance attire and might I say I'm as pleased as punch that they actually added a track jacket or several of these warm-up style jackets to the female clothing selections so now Miss Aurora has herself her own specific uh, warm-up jacket just like the other guys do uh, obviously she had a, a hoodie last year because the only jacket they had then was the uh, Letterman style jacket and I didn't want to use that at least for both attires I use it on the alternate but not the primary but for the primary here she's back to being uniform with the rest of her team if you will and it's pretty much the same elements as it is that I had used on last year's game with the uh, the guys so you have the uh, Lions Pride logo country of origin and the abbreviation and then their specific logo on the back side of which in this case it's her queen of sport lioness driver logo uh, I wanted to use the, the logo with the move on it as opposed to her name because I want that to be what it is that she's known for what it is that her opponents know they're in for when it is that they step into the ring with her she's going to use that driver and she's going to use it effectively so really basic look and uh, it definitely completes the look that I wanted to have for the whole Lions Pride uh, camp, if you will. And I'm really looking forward to working on her counterparts. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun getting into the, uh, the guys, but I definitely enjoyed myself uh, coming up with these ideas for the uh, female characters as well especially considering the fact that there's so much more that you can do now and in little things like this having a jacket being able to you know complete the look I said it before it's just a matter of making things work and putting things all together effectively and I've been able to do that successfully with everyone that I've created thus far so really cool look here looks cool when she's walking out to the ring as well you've probably already seen that however if you took a look at her countdown video so you know exactly what I'm talking about here anyway now let's take a look at the alternate attire so for her alternate attire we went with a completely different variation entirely using some of the same elements but in a completely different style here so this is kind of like a, a signature logo so to speak you still got the lioness logo in the center but instead you have her name and script everything else is pretty much the same with the uh, lion's pride logo her uh, nation's flag and everything like that and then if we take a look down on the tights you've got her other nickname prominently emblazed on it that being the queen of sports so yeah, nice little touch there, really, really subtle there. And uh, the signature logo on the back side as well. Everything else is pretty much the same. Elements are very similar, not that much variation, but where the variation lies definitely creates a different feel on the attire, like an actual alternate attire that's not a completely different attire entirely and that's what I wanted to do here you know create kind of a, a uniform 
effect for her. And uh, that's going to be something that I'll be doing with the other three members of Lion's Pride as well. So it's, an, it's a case of coming up with ideas for her that I'm going to be carrying over to them. Which is cool because it was the other way around last year. She was the last person in Lion's Pride that I decided I wanted to create. And so now she's the first. And everyone else in Lion's Bride is going to be derived off of design cues that I came up from her. So, it's kind of a role reversal thing. Very, very cool stuff. Anyway. Now let's look at her entrance attire for this particular setup. So for the entrance gear for the alternate, I decided I wanted to go with the uh, hoodie. Because I already used the track jacket, so what else ever says sporty than coming out with a hood up and a warm up hoodie, basically. And it's pretty much the same elements as is on the uh, gear itself. Got Queen of Sport on the chest there, and then her name on the back. So this is very much a uh, custom piece right here. And, uh, it's a nice touch. It's a very, very nice effect. And, uh, I mean, that's all it is that I can say, really. I mean, it's just a matter of doing things that surprise me, really. If anything, I might probably add a uh, flag, possibly on the uh, sleeve there. But it's not really that necessary. This looks good the way that it is. And uh, it also very much uh, conveys the character of Aurora, which is a very competitive and very athletic individual. And she prides herself on being as such. So just being able to, uh, once again, convey that whole type of uh, persona and give that feel of the character just from the look of the character without even having to explain the character is my ultimate goal for basically everyone that I create. Some I do better than others. In this case, I think I did a pretty good job. So, yeah. That is going to be the Lioness. And, uh, yeah, she is definitely one of my favorites at least in terms of, well, not just in terms of a look, but in terms of the moveset as well. I mean, she's, jeez, she is a killer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you right now, there, 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 there's a bit of a competition going on between America Weston and uh, Aurora here as to who is the true purveyor of the suplex in the Diamond Division. And uh, you'll be seeing that in detail, in great detail, over the course of 2K18. And now, folks, the return of the crazy one. Yep. Dollface, back once again for 2K18. And looking just as evil and sinister as ever. Uh, pretty much the same exact idea, the same exact attire. The only difference is the color scheme. Because in last year's version, I used a red and white getup for the primary attire. We don't want any freaking white on this chick. No. It's got to be dark colors. And it's got to be evil looking colors. So, I went with a really dark kind of blood red and black satin on her uh, top and dress. The uh, skull here, again, is one of my own uh, edited logos. This one I had used originally on Adam Warden, a member of Villainy. Probably still going to use it, but just probably manipulate it a little bit more to look a little different. But it, you can just pretty much see that the color scheme, it just matched too perfect for me not to use it here. Uh, the skull also is on the back, even though you can't actually see it because of the green hair. Decided I wanted to stick with the green hair just to give it kind of a, a Joker-ish look to her without necessarily being a, uh, you know, 
gender swap of the Joker. Even though facially, she kind of sort of looks like a gender swap of the Joker. Again, the face I actually found on this website, it was actually, uh, you know, some, some makeup that this woman had on. And uh, that basically spawned the idea for the character. Because I've never actually had that kind of evil psycho female character before. So now I do. And uh, she has slowly became one of my favorites just on the fact of her being so damn unique is the best word that I can come up with. <laughs> and that's not doing her justice because I've got her set up to be really, really crazy and really, really violent. And that is a very, very dangerous combination, let me tell you. And you'll see for yourself, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it is that she next appears in the uh, Warfield Invitational Tournament. Oh boy, things are going to get kind of extreme. Not much really else to say as far as the uh, attire goes. It's just basically a conversion with some subtle changes here and there for her primary look. And then for her entrance attire, she's got this Dr. Seuss looking cat in the hat type of top hat thing. Gives that kind of really evil psycho circus type of vibe to her. Which is exactly the type of vibe that I wanted to have for the character. Uh, kind of a combination of uh, new things and old things. Because I have a kind of a dollhouse type of uh, idea for her in last year's game and that's going to also be absorbed with this evil circus type of thing and it's really really hard for me to explain to you guys you just have to see for yourself in the uh, execution of the character in terms of uh, conveying a story through the matches and her move sets. So, yeah, uh, just pretty cut and dry here. Now, let's take a look at the alternates. And yeah, this is pretty awesome. Pretty evil, but pretty awesome. Once again, I went with the uh, white face, not necessarily the uh, clown face, but kinda close to it. Same thing that I did for alternate attire last year kind of this dark Lolita type of deal going on. The uh, skull logo here in this case is one that I pulled from uh, Community Creations because just plain old skulls are a dime a dozen on Community Creations. I really didn't have to put too much work in to find it. I just had to find one that matched the uh, color scheme that I was going with here which is all black with some white tones in there so yeah I went with red and black for the primary attire so it only made sense for me to go all black on the secondary because I'm completely unimaginative yeah we already know this but yeah just look at her I mean that is definitely a very very dangerous and evil woman uh, you probably wouldn't want to be in a fight against her, but lo and behold, that's what everybody in the Diamond Division is going to have to deal with. And oh boy, wait until you see what I do with this character. Like, it's going to get weird. And it's going to get really crazy when you see it, who it is that I have planned on eventually matching her up against, at least for... Uh, a brief stint of time it's 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 gonna be interesting and then to complete the look for the uh, alternate attire her entrance gear is that kind of a uh, mad hatter hat so on one you got the uh, cat in the hat and then the on the other you have the mad hatter and in both cases it definitely works out extremely well and yeah I'm kind of creeped out just looking at her face right now here <laughs> and 
And that's how you know you have pulled off the exact type of character that you wanted to make. When that character is intimidating to you who made it. So imagine you out there who might be getting your hands on her. You're definitely going to uh, enjoy having this type of character on your roster. Unless you already have these type of characters on your roster. To which case, she'll make a nice addition in just her own little subtle ways. But, like I said, I've never had that type of a character on my game or in my series of shows before. So, it's going to be really, really fun using her and uh, building on whatever kind of backstory it is that I come up with her. There's not really much backstory necessary aside from the fact that she's psycho, she likes hurting people, and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but we'll see. But in the meantime, that is Dollface 2K18 for ya. And uh, yeah, watch the shadows. And now on to something a little more brighter. This here is the 2K18 version of La Reina. And before I get into anything about her ring gear or appearance, I just have to say that I am very, very pissed off right now. And the reason being is because last year they finally had it to where you could put on a lucha mask on a character with long hair. And this year they took it away again. The only long hair that applies to any masks, like the Rey Mysterio mask or the other masks that are featured, is ponytails, as in low ponytails, like this one here, and one mullet. That's it. Everything else doesn't match. You put the hair on, you can't put the mask. You put the mask on, you can't put the hair. What's up with that, 2K Games? How is it that you put something on the game one year, and then the next year, it's just gone? I don't get it. Anyway, fortunately, that didn't force me to change too much on her. Just the fact that she obviously has her hair in a ponytail. But everything else pretty much is the same, just like in the case of Dollface, as far as how it is that I designed the character. With a couple of exceptions, the uh, bottoms here are a uh, gold and white variation of Ember Moon's attire, which worked extremely well, almost too well, like it was actually made for her, because the attire here and her overall look was obviously modeled after the uh, character La Mariposa, from the Dead or Alive series. Like the second I saw that character, I knew one month I knew that I wanted to make a uh, female Luchador character. And the only thing that has stopped me or made limitations to my uh, building on her has been how it is that these WWE games have handled masks. Because obviously WWE has no love for Lucha Libre whatsoever. I don't get it. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. You've got the uh, gold butterfly effects going on here on the Bazaar. That's two different sets. And then the same going on on her uh, left hand sleeve there. you got the emboss function going on here. It really, really stands out. It almost makes the artwork look like it is actually gold, like actual metallic gold. And uh, that's pretty cool. That is all very, very cool. There you see it on the mask again. From a distance, it looks metallic. The only thing it's missing is the actual uh, shine effect, which unfortunately, you can't have, at least on the car models. I found out that you can actually put a metallic effect on logos in the belts, however. And oh boy, I'm gonna have fun working on those. But 
unfortunately, doesn't carry over to the actual characters, which would have been a really, really cool thing if they would have been able to let us be able to do that. But anyway, that's the all uh, primary attire here. Now let's have a look at her entrance gear. It's going to get kind of bright. I'll give you fair warning. I warned you. So we got the uh, Stardust uh, cape going on here. I gave it a glow effect because why not give it a glow effect? It looks beautiful in her entrance, which is pretty dark and uh, shadowy anyway. And it just have that light emitting as she makes her way to the ring just kind of really, really completes the look. Also the fact that she has legend status, so you just have those little special subtleties to her to make her uh, stand out. And uh, yeah, I mean it just worked very, very well. And when you see it in game, you'll most definitely agree with that sentiment as well. So. Now let's have a look at her alternate attire, which isn't too f much of a variation. Basically, the alternate attire is a uh, actual face mask, as opposed to being a lucha mask. Yes, I put a glow effect on the feathers. I don't care. I like the glow effect. <laughs> but yeah, this is pretty close to how it was that I was making her before because you couldn't use long hair at all with the masks and I wanted her to show off the long hair so I would have her in either the uh, cane mask or this kind of uh, masquerade mask and it looks cool it's it's definitely a different variation still kind of mysterious and uh, a nice alternative but uh, yeah as far as La Reina here goes I really wish they would have kept the dang mask using long hair. I mean, jeez. This, this is like a gripe that I have right now, man. That's just not cool. But as far as her moves go, obviously, I have her set up to being the fastest and most agile character in my entire roster. That being as far as both the men and the female. So, she's got a lot of quickness, a lot of lucha moves, and obviously a lot of uh, high-flying aerial acrobatics going on. You pretty much know what it is that you're getting if you add her to your roster. And, uh, yeah, La Reina for ya. Next up, the other resident... Uh, Luchadora of the Diamond Division. This, of course, being the 2K18 version of Marisol Cardinal, who, of course, has a whole lot of backstory behind her. She's the uh, first protege of Tadako Togo, representative of the Togo Dojo, and also the daughter of a legendary luchador himself that went by the name of the Red Cardinal. So she's basically carrying on the family business, so to speak. Now before I get into the actual attire, we'll get into the face because I have to get into the face for those of you who had not seen her from last year's version. Pretty much I had always modeled this particular character even from back in the uh, past gen versions of the game from uh, Sofia Vergara. So you obviously see the uh, similarities there. Pretty much the same idea I did with America Weston, I did with Marisol here as far as Sofia's face goes as it being creating a symmetrical composite of her face so that it looks kind of like her, but kind of not like her, if you get the idea. Now, as far as the actual uh, character design goes, you will actually notice 
you probably noticed a couple of seconds ago or minutes ago, one little but not so little addition to Miss Cardinal, that being the fact that I gave her some ink. Yes, I found this uh, Cardinal uh, artwork off of a Google search as I was looking for uh, some logo work to give to her, to give a completely new look to her. And this here was so good, after it is that I mirrored it and created the actual asset that you see on the rest of her gear, that I thought to myself, you know what? Why not put it on her as well? Because it fits the character. It fits her name. It fits her persona, her family history. It just works all away, all the way around. So there you have it. She's got some ink now. And like I said, the Cardinals are also an element that is featured on just about every other part of her ring gear here. See it on the Bazier. You see it on the uh, elbow pads, on the trunks, and the knee pads. Obviously not the boots, because you can't put anything on the boots. I wish you could put something on those boots, like a texture or something like that on the tassels. But I guess that's a little too much work for the... Uh, CPU processor or whatever, I'm making excuses for them. Anyway, the name logo that you see is kind of like a graffiti-ish style. That's another font I found from thefont.com that got prettied up with a Photoshop style. And it actually kind of sort of looks like actual graffiti from a distance. I mean, even from this close, you can see like the, uh, the, the design here is really, really cool. And uh, underneath all that is a uh, red fractal design that I used for the uh, background. I had originally designed to just use that and then just have a single version of the Cardinal just kind of fluttering around somewhere in the background. But like I said before, you're not working with a whole lot of space here for logos in terms of uh, female characters. So everything's got to be horizontal so for the most part things have to be kind of sort of symmetrical specifically in terms of the uh brassiere here and also to an extent the trunks as well but anyway in keeping to uh marisol's uh traditional color scheme she wears primarily red because cardinals are primarily red so that much sticks out as well and uh, I mean there's not much else to say as far as her uh, overall look goes uh, except the fact that it's like most of my other creations right now a variation or a uh, modernization or a continuation take your pick pick a word <laughs> Carrying things over from uh, last year's game into this year's game. Some characters I want to keep a look. Some characters I can mess around with and make them look slightly different. And then there's other characters that just completely get 100% overhaul. That's just how it goes. Depends on who it is and I'm working with here. So, anyway. That's her primary attire. Let's take a look at the ultimate now. So... Her alternate get up here is really ornate and really, really, uh, I guess you could say, uh, I don't normally call something beautiful, but this is just a beautiful look here, pretty much. The goal here for this particular attire was to create something of a variation of uh, Tadako Togo's attire. You can see, if you pay attention to some of the uh, differentiations here with uh, Marisol's look, that there are elements that are similar to that of Tadako's attire. That being, more specifically, flipping and the, uh, the placement of certain elements in the logos. Like how you have the name logo on one of the kick pads while the other one is dominated by a specific design and that carries over onto the uh the arm pieces in her case arm sleeves 
in Tadako's case, it would be the uh, gloves and the uh, arm sleeves above them. And they're basically pretty much the same idea. I mean, specifically in terms of the uh, color scheme and the logo placement, I wanted it to look kind of like Tadako's ring gear, but still have that same kind of feel of Marisol's character just kind of an homage if you will anyway Marisol's look really really nice I definitely have impressed myself with this, this one <laughs> uh, I impressed myself a lot it was seen because every year I just keep on doing more and more and it just keeps on looking really really freaking good and yeah that's, that's all I got for you. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be Marisol Cardinal 2K18. And, uh, yeah. She looked good. She wrestles pretty good, too. Next up is Natasia, a.k.a. one big, strong, mean Russian woman. Yeah. Obviously, she has kind of established herself as being one of the uh, more intimidating newcomers within the Diamond Division, and it shouldn't take anybody any real guesses as to why that is the case. She is every bit as powerful as the most powerful within the Diamond Division with the exception of the fact that she's got a real mean streak to her. Which is saying something considering the fact that Tamara has a pretty mean streak to her as well. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, birds of a feather, I guess. Anyway. Once again, the uh, physique. Thank goodness they brought back body morphing. That's all I can say because... The way she looks, I mean, pretty much the same idea as uh, Jamie Fury and Sarah Warfield. You get the gist, like, exactly what it is that she's about. What she brings to the table here. She could probably beat a couple of people in some arm wrestling contests. <laughs> anyway, this is one of those situations where her overall uh, attire design, costume design, whatever you want to call it, didn't really need much in the vein of changing so I didn't change anything well almost the uh, brassiere is pretty much the same idea where you have the uh, Russian coat of arms over a name logo that is using the color scheme of the Russian flag and that is also featured down here on the uh, trunks Except the fact that the uh, coat of arms now is wrapped around the entire trunks. Thanks in part to that feature specifically. And then pretty much everything else on her is similar to uh, her look from last year. With the exception of the boots. Because once again we have one of those situations where the combination that I used in 2K17 doesn't work in 2k18 like why is this happening is it a bug or a glitch or something I don't get it but you just have to work around it and that's exactly what I did here even though I preferred how it is that I had her boots looking last year I can't make that happen because these boots can't be used with certain kick bags why like I I'm racking my brains as to it, but what, what can you do? You have to work around certain things. And uh, the end result here ain't so bad. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, as I've said the last time I showcased her, the initial design and concept for her came from the uh, portrayal of the character Mother Russia from uh, Kick-Ass 2 as in the film version of the character, not the comic version, because the comic version looked completely different from the film version of the character. So, yeah, we went with that, 
which prompted me to have to repackage another character that was loosely based off of, at least in terms of appearance, the character Mother Russia from the film. You'll see the end result of that in a future video as well, but I wanted to give you the, uh, the, 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 the current iteration as featured in the Warfield Invitational here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, from what it is that you see here, you can pretty much make out what she's all about. Let's take a look now at the alternates. So, the alternate attire is kind of the same idea as uh, how it is that I had it set up in last year's version of the game. Except the assets themselves are slightly different. You got some uh, red skulls here. Dark red against a brighter red on the tights in the background. And then the uh, main element is this logo here. Massive aggressive. Kind of a play off of the term passive aggressive. That's also featured up top here on the Bazier. Now I actually backstory here on this specific idea here, this, this logo. Um, you might have noticed that I used that same type of logo on the uh, prototype version of Jersey Red last year. So I was unaware that I actually had that logo sitting around when I decided I wanted to put it on Natasia here. So I'm actually going to just change it into uh, kind of a, a, a brand, if you will, like a fictitious brand logo for uh, ring gear to be used by uh, some of my characters out there. So it'll be kind of like a, a tap out type of deal. And uh, there's a couple of other ideas that I have as well for like brands or just like kind of uh, doing things a little more um, unique and uniform to uh, characters. Just like uh, fun little nuances like that so she won't be the only person that you'll see with this uh, massive aggressive logo on it'll be featured on some other characters in some way shape or form of which I don't know exactly how yet because I'm just thinking of this stuff as it is that I'm saying it to you right now <laughs> inspiration is everywhere I can't say it enough times anyway I'm kind of torn with the boots because again I couldn't get the boots to look how I wanted them to so we got these Batista boots here I'm thinking about flipping the color scheme and making it all red with black overtones and seeing how it is that it looks like against the uh, red on the uh, other side but I'm thinking that maybe that would kind of clash with the uh, black on the armbands and the elbow pads kind of brainstorming right here the attire itself pretty much is done it's just whether or not I want to make those changes to the attire and see how it looks or stick with it as it is but right now though it's pretty good I mean you can't really say too much bad about it she's pretty much done and uh, yeah it's just a matter of when it is that I decide I want to uh, unleash her into the world and uh, see how much havoc it is that she can wreak in other people's rosters. Because she's very much capable of that. And last but not least for the week, we have the 2K18 version of Sierra K. And uh, this is one of those situations where I definitely did some more fleshing out of the character from the uh, logo work and just basically building the current version of her appearance. Let's take a closer look here. You see the uh, name logo in kind of the uh, gold style there. Very nice looking. Uh, surrounding what is a variation of the Queen's Wrath logo. This is a uh, symbol that is known to anybody out there who plays Destiny as being the symbol of the Awoken Royal Guard 
that is led by the Queen of Reef. It's also featured on several of their uh, weapons and armor gear pieces from Destiny 1. And it looks so damn cool that I decided I wanted to use it as the uh, basis to Sierra K's uh, attire and kind of sort of her gimmick, so to speak. I kind of went into a little detail over the course of the uh, first round of the Invitational Tournament. The fact, obviously, that Miss K here is one of the, uh, is basically the lone female student of the School of Hardcore. So, that school being founded by Riot, aka The King, gives her fair right to claim to call herself a, a queen or the queen considering the fact that she learned from the king but yet there are those others out there who call themselves queens of sports queens of suplexes and just queen bees or whatever the case may be so her ambition is to solidify the fact that there is only but one true queen in the diamond division and in wrestling as a whole and she is that person so there you have some backstory for you now we see in the back side here of the trunks kind of in the same style I have Queen's Wrath that's actually the uh, name of an event in Destiny uh, that centers around the Awoken and the Awoken Queen it also just so happens to now be the name of uh, Sierra's brand spanking new finishing maneuver. So it only felt right to use it as a design element in her ring attire as well. And we see more of the uh, Queen's Raph logos going on there on the uh, knee pads. And I decided to give her kind of these like punk boots just to... Uh, give it a little more edge as opposed to it being uh, kind of a traditional wrestling gear. You can see that going on here with the uh, arms as well. She's got bandanas on with the uh, fingerless gloves, kind of these uh, ties going on in the uh, arms. You know, just kind of a traditional look but with its own little uh, kind of uh, rougher edges to it as well. Let's scroll up to the face here because for those of you who did not see her in last year's version of the game, her face, once again, is another a uh, symmetrical composite based off of a actual person, in this case a Instagram model that goes by the name of Lacey K. Summers. There will be pictures for your viewing pleasure on the side of your screen there. You're welcome. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I follow her on Instagram. Once I saw her, I decided, you know what? We want to make a character that's based off of her look. And, uh, long story short, basically, I renamed this character Sierra K. She had a different name. Same backstory. So I just put it all together, and this is the end result here. <laughs> I'm not going to go into too much detail. Just, uh, watch the other weekly upload updates volume 1 episode 17 I believe 16 or 17 I don't know I'm freaking lost count it might be 15 I have no idea uh, it was one of the very last ones that I put in that I first introduced most of these characters that you see here there you'll get the full backstory here you get the the, the, the cliff notes so yeah pretty much let's take a look now at her entrance gear so again, going with that kind of like urban type of uh, vibe, so to speak, we give her the uh, vest here, and there on the back, if you can actually see it behind the uh, hair there, you see the, uh, the logo going on, where it says, The One True Queen. That's basically her, uh, her shtick, if you will. Queen's Wrath logo once again and on the back there embroidered this time because it is a leather vest so it makes sense 
and then you got it again in the front here. Really a nice look. Very cool effect. And then once again, that logo featured on the uh, skull cap, basically. And it's a really nice look. I mean, uh, it definitely uh, fits the character. And like I said before, that's something that I try to do a lot. And uh, just messing around with different things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And it worked. Lucky for me. So, yeah, really simple stuff here. That's the uh, primary attire. Now let's take a look at the alternates. So our alternate attire is kind of the same idea as uh, Aurora's, where I kind of went with more of like a signature type of look. However, I might actually end up doing a little bit more with it because I'm not 100% satisfied with it just being solid black. I can stand to put some like designs in the background there, like some gray tribals or just something to make it stand out just a little bit more than it does. I do like the SK logo, kind of like a baseball style logo there. Just as an alternate to the uh, Queen's Wrath logo. The font's pretty much the same, but just something to go underneath that to make it stand out a little bit and not be all black is what I'm probably going to end up doing, but that's not one of those things to where I would just say that she's incomplete just for that. Um, I'll probably do that before I upload her and uh, have that a little mini update so you see the final results in a future video but for right now this is uh, her alternate gear and uh, the main part really is the entrance attire that I've put for this specific gear that really makes me want to uh, add more to it because it deserves to be seen and it's actually going to be seen in the case of a lot of other characters as you will soon see in the next couple of seconds and there we have it like this I'm really proud of this is so cool I basically created a uh, Roots of Fight logo for the School of Hardcore for those of you who don't know who Roots of Fight is they are a brand of uh, sportswear particularly tees, jackets, sweatshirts, tanks, that type of stuff that specialize in having uh, homages to certain great athletes of uh, yesteryear, particularly those like Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, uh, that was the primary one, but then they branched off to uh, other athletes as well, boxers, uh, MMA fighters, um, Tyson, freaking GSP, Anderson Silva, Babe Ruth, Walter Payton, the list goes on and on and on. The brand itself was popularized mostly by The Rock, who would be wearing their stuff whenever it is that he made appearances on WWE after he became a big old superstar. And it just blew up from there. Uh, I myself have a couple of pieces from uh, the, the brand, and I said to myself, you know what? Let's try to make something off of that. So we took a font and we did some uh, manipulation here with the uh, arcs and the uh, stars and basically really, really subtle effect, basic effect, but powerful effect because now the School of Arts core has themselves a Roots of Fight shirt, of an official team shirt. Now, I made one before, but this one's obviously a whole lot better. A whole lot better. So much so that I'm going to be using that shirt as a walkout shirt for every other member of the School of Hardcore that I have on my roster. Aside from Riot. He'll be the one that doesn't wear it because I've got my own stuff planned for his shirts. But John Payne, Christian Phoenix, 
uh, Double XL, Sierra K here, obviously, and yeah, it's it's it, 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 it's official ring wear now, and that kind of prompted me into making that whole idea with the uh, brands, if you will, like Massive Aggressive and other stuff that I have planned going on and going forward as well too. So yeah, really really cool stuff here, and. Uh, it, it's helping me take my design into a different realm entirely like I'm actually even contemplating converting this logo minus the Roots of Fight logo and making it into a shirt like an actual real life shirt I'll give you more details on that at another time but if you would rock a School of Hardcore shirt then let me know in the comment section down below because I'm gonna make the damn thing for myself but if anybody else is interested, I could put it online on uh, Shopify for like 15 bucks or something like that. Really cheap stuff here. But yeah, that's going into another subject that I'll go into in a future video about other creative endeavors that I have. But putting it all together in this type of way is really, really cool and really, really exciting. So looking forward to that. So anyway, that element will remain very prominent, and I'm probably going to be doing something else with this alternate attire here, so stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much it for Miss K 2K18 for now. Any other updates, you'll see real soon. And so, as I said before, all eight of the uh, characters that have been featured in this video are available for download right now on PlayStation 4 Community Creations. That's America Weston, Dollface, Lorena, Natasia, Marisol Cardinal, Sierra K, Abigail Rooker, and Aurora Cellini. Five out of these eight cars will feature DLC content from the Seen Enough or Kurt Angle packs. So be warned and be aware of this fact. I will show you, in fact, the details. America Weston features DLC. Dollface does not feature any DLC content. La Reina does feature DLC content. Natasia also features DLC content. Marisol Cardinal also features DLC. Sierra K does not feature DLC content. Neither does Abigail Rooker. And lastly, Aurora Cellini does include DLC content. So three out of the eight will be non-DLC. The other five will feature some form of content from the packs that are once again now available for purchase across all platforms. So if you want to get all of my content, then go ahead and buy that content. It's only going to set you back maybe $12, $13 American or whatever the equivalent is in your country. It's not that bad. And then you won't have any restrictions to getting any of the content that I will have put out going forward. Now, these eight cards are going to be available on Community Creations for the next seven days as of this video being uploaded to YouTube, not as of it being filmed. I'm filming it on the 14th of November. It'll be seven days from the day that it is made available to you to watch on YouTube that I'll be taking these eight down and then replacing them with a combination of the other 10 cores that I have previously released from the previous two weekly upload updates that you might have missed because you didn't have the DLC content that I used for them. So the likes of Haley Jonas, Sarah Warfield, Jamie Fury, Sin Callahan, etc., etc., will all be re uploaded next week 
for anybody who missed out on them. And then from there, I'll be using DLC content for the rest of the cards that I make, feature, and upload in future videos. So once again, be aware of this. And if you can get that content, then get the content because why wouldn't you want to have everything anyway? That's not here nor there though. That's just information that I wanted to get out there for you guys so that you know what's going on for the future. That being said, search tags for my content, as always, are going to be 3X call. That is the number three, followed by the letters XCAW or XWA. And with that said, volume two, episode three of the weekly upload update comes to a close. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you are new to this channel, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I post these weekly upload updates as weekly as possible. Sometimes it's not weekly, but it happens. I also do Car to University tutorials. I have one that I have previously done just a couple of days ago about the body morphing feature in 2K18 and how you can use it to create very, very different physiques. And then, of course, there's the actual XWA shows themselves, which, like I said, I will be refilming the remaining rounds of the Warfield Invitational using these very eight cards that you see right here in 2K18. That's all coming down the pipeline very soon, and you don't want to miss any of it. So make sure you should subscribe. And if you are subscribed, then make sure you hit that bell button next to the subscribe button so you'll be instantly notified whenever it is that I release new content on my channel, new videos, and so on and so forth. So, you'll be in the know. With that all out of the way, thanks again for watching, and that'll do it for this one. Until the next time, this is OB, aka 3X, signing off.